Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. You hear a lot about uh, all the wonderful things that are happening in the Broward health world. And I am so happy to be a part of that. And all you need to do is go into the hospitals and talk to the administrators and the nurses and the doctors and just even people in their gift shops. And it's a wonderful, wonderful organization. It's a very big district, and we're very privileged to have Mark Sprada, uh, who's going to talk to us today about what he's doing there. He's now the acting CEO of Broward Health Medical Center. So welcome to our show, Mark. Happy to be here. You know, there's confusion there because there's so many medical centers in the district. Will you just enumerate where they are, and I know that the Broward Health Medical Center is the largest one. Is that right down in Fort Lauderdale? Correct. So in within Broward Health, we have five hospitals. Uh, our flagship facility is Broward Health Medical Center, which has an, in, an embedded 200-bed children's hospital, and we're located in downtown Fort Lauderdale. We also have Broward Health North which is at Sample in 95, which is a large 400-bed hospital and level 2 trauma center, as well as a cancer center. We have Coral Springs Medical Center, which is obviously in Coral Springs and serves Coral Springs, Parkland, uh, Margate, Tamarack. And um, we also have Imperial Point Medical Center, which is at Federal Highway and Cypress Creek Road, which is a 200-bed community hospital um, very well known for service and uh, an excellent outpatient surgery experience. Okay, that's a very big uh, part of Broward County itself. And without good hospitals, no one wants to live in a county. So we're, <laughs> we're happy that uh, you explained that. Now, you have just become the CEO of Broward Health Medical Center. And how's that going? It's going well. I've been here since the beginning of January. Uh, I've I've worked for Broward Health since 1997 in several leadership roles, primarily in in nursing, um, but have been at the COO level and CEO level before in my career. And uh, I actually began my career with Broward Health at Broward Health Medical Center, then called Broward General Medical Center. And uh, so it's like coming home. And uh, I feel uh, very involved here, and I, I'm happy to help the hospital grow and uh, maintain and improve our quality of care. Right. And the big thing is we now have a special campaign for Broward Health that's all about kids. And, it uh, is all about the kids. <laughs> and, and in our magazine, Boomer Times, we have been featuring uh, Lorraine Thomas and her grandchildren. I don't know if you ever got to see that ad, but... It's amazing, all those beautiful grandchildren. It is, and it is all about the children. And, you know, obviously that's what makes our community great and the next generation. So Broward Health Medical Center really has been serving the children in our community since 1938. Uh, We have a deep tradition of providing quality of care to families. And, of course, we fulfill our mission. We care for anyone who walks through our doors, uh, and we also have world-class health care and residency programs. So we're happy that we're doing a $50 million-plus renovation of our children's hospital to have a more patient-centered environment in which the patient and their small loved one can heal together. Well, the one thing that I just love about the Broward Health Hospitals, and I have been involved in talking with so many of the CEOs, and I was very involved with Broward Health North for many years because it's closer to Bombay County for me where I live. But that's the one thing you see. You see such humanity. You see people who are, whether it's the CEO or you see it's uh, the janitor walking along. People are friendly. They want to help. It's it's always been a great organization. And I really take my hat off to all the founders and all the people who work so hard to make it so. And so what we want to do, though, today is, uh, in a sense, I'm going to try to raise some money for the the children's hospitals, too, the children's hospital. We have a campaign going, everyone, and we're trying to raise our last $1 million because it's been matched by another $10 million. So if any of you want to really make a difference in your life, and, you know, there's something special knowing that you will 
contribute to an organization that will be there forever. And by the way, there's something very new. We now have beautiful founders walls, which in each hospital there's a, a gorgeous art a piece of artwork that you'll see that you would become a part of it. So if you want information on that, I'm going to ask you to call 954-712-3980. That's 954-712-3980. Now, so Mark, now that you're the acting CEO, um, there and you've been, of course, in the world of health and, and helping as a nurse, what what do you see happening? Now, you're you're going to be, of course, the children's hospital is a part of that. But I, the thing that I really liked when I went in there was the women's center. Sure. I mean, that's pretty different, isn't it, to go in, get a massage. You can get a lot of things, and it's really supposed to be a hospital. So what's happening there? So we were fortunate enough to receive an endowment from the Lillian Wells Foundation, and with that, we we're able to build a women's center, and it really is a comprehensive approach to women's health care, ensuring that we have a healing and relaxing environment so you can get a massage, you can get a pedicure, there's uh, you know other things that can relax you, but then also very, taking very seriously the idea of screening and prevention. So it really is all about prevention. We want to ensure that all the women in our community get their preventative uh, screenings, such as mammograms and pap smears and and general health assessments. Make that convenient for the working woman or anyone with a busy schedule so we have extended hours, Saturday hours, so that they can achieve taking care of what they need to, which is themselves first before they can take care of anyone else. Well, Mark, you said that you've been involved since 1997 in this uh, health field. What kind of changes? I mean, just talking about the Women's Center, what other changes have happened to the hospital world? Well, really, when I began my nursing career in the in the late 80s, we really did have a sick model. Uh, we didn't really focus on prevention. So I would say the greatest change is about preventing illness. We know that we're all living longer. We know a lot more about what we need to do to take care of ourselves in terms of exercise and diet and preventative screening and and really moving to what the buzzword in healthcare right now is called population health. So we at Broward Health, like many other health systems, we are it's all about data. So as you know, when you go to any doctor's office or any hospital, you have all of your healthcare information in a computer. And we de-identify that as appropriate, and we really look at the risk within our population. So we have a centralized population health department that really focuses on what particular patient populations need to do to improve their health. So we're working on hypertension in our community, Uh, diabetes prevention, weight loss, diet and exercise, prevention of cardiovascular disease. So it really is about keeping people out of the hospital. Uh, To be in the hospital today, you have to be really, really sick. And uh, we still do that very, very well. We can can save you. We can uh, ensure that you have quality of life. But really, our goal is to keep everyone out of the hospital. That's excellent. And that's, you know, years ago, in all the small communities around the country, you know, there weren't many hospitals. You lived in a rural area, so you did stay at home. A doctor came. He took care of you at home unless it was extremely serious. Maybe you're going back to that. Absolutely. We have a lot of care occurring out in the home. We're also leveraging technology to care for people. So we use telemedicine where you can have an audio-visual conversation Uh, It can be as simple as reviewing a patient's medications with them. We call it the kitchen table exercise, which is go throughout the house and put on the kitchen table every single medication you're taking. You put that on the left side of the table, and we go through each medication, and what ends up on the right side of the table is everything you should be taking and bag up everything else. So we're doing a lot of outreach using technology. I love that. What did you call that? We call it the kitchen table exercise. (laughs) (laughs) I think we all should do that because I think, you know, even my husband's taking medication. I have no idea what he's taking. 
And uh, I like that. So then everybody's uh, aware of it because I think you're right. If you've been taking medication for five years, maybe there should be someone looking over that medication. Yeah, absolutely. What we find is, uh, you know, that communication is, is, always an opportunity among human beings and what we find is people um, have several doctors sometimes uh, something gets missed and we don't realize that you're taking a medication that you either no longer need or actually has a drug interaction um, with another medication and many times with all of the pharmacy deals we have patients who are utilizing several different pharmacies that may not talk to each other as well because there's certain uh, uh, pricing advantages from getting certain drugs from certain pharmacies. Yeah, that's so true. My guest is Mark Sprada. He's the acting CEO of Broward Health Medical Center. That's down on um, Andrews Avenue. It's like just a little bit, a couple of blocks south of Davie. And it's a it's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. You know, Mark, when I go there for ma- meetings, various things, I always and I drive up and I it's valet service. In fact, all your hospitals have valet and that is so nice when, especially when people have a hard time walking. So I applaud you all for doing that. But complimentary valet, by the way. What? Complimentary valet. Oh, excuse me. That's right. <laughs> Last night I went to the Kravis Center and it wasn't complimentary. <laughs> Thank you. You're right. Complimentary and. That's been that's happened at a lot of hospitals over the last probably five six years, and that was excellent. Whoever thought of that really should be applauded. But I wanted to tell you, as I drive in there, I see people from all walks of life, people who are elders, people with children. It it really runs the whole gamut. And how is that to run a hospital that you have to deal with all ages? I think it's a privilege. Uh, you know, we and not to be um, insensitive, but really, it really is mind-boggling when you think about on one floor in the hospital, life is beginning, and unfortunately, sometimes on another floor, a life is ending. So it really is about the continuum of life and, and making sure that everyone is treated with dignity and respect, whether they have a happy occasion or a sad occasion. Yes, that's beautifully said, and that is very true, and um, I wanted to just go through what what it really is to be a nurse. We know what it is to be a doctor, but you know how many people say, you don't have to send a doctor and just send in a nurse. Why do you think that is? Well, really, nursing is about a team effort, uh, although nursing, certainly, we have our own body of science and knowledge. We are one member of a team, and the way I view nursing is the nurse is the linchpin, uh, we we spend the most time with the patient, so it is our job to make sure all the care providers are communicating with each other and that we're advocating for our patient to make sure nothing slips through the cracks. So it really is an honor to, to be a nurse. Uh, no one goes into nursing to get rich. You go into nursing because you care about people and you want to make a difference. And I, I always enjoy the passion of nursing and It served me well in executive roles because when you bring that passion to an executive role, you're really focused on doing the right thing for the patient every day, and that's what everyone in healthcare needs to focus on. That's good. I'm glad you said that. So when did you first decide you wanted to be a nurse? It actually was um, coincidental. Um, I I come from a long uh, history of family, family members that are in healthcare, but both my grandmothers uh, were nurses, and uh, it was a, it's a funny story. When I visited uh, one grandmother through the summer, I was always put in timeout. And uh, <laughs> so when she uh, put me in timeout in her uh, library, I would read all of her nursing books. And uh, when I said, you know, I think I want to be a nurse, of course, it wasn't common for men to be a nursing in those days, although keep in mind, nursing originally was men because it was religious orders of men that did nursing before uh, it sort of migrated to a female field. I didn't know that. Yes, absolutely. And um, and so when I would read these nursing textbooks, uh, you know, they said, oh, you should be a doctor. And I said, I really don't want to be a doctor. I want to be a nurse. I've read these books. And, and that's how I got started. And where, where was your grandmother living? In, in Ohio, in Dayton, Ohio. That's where my family still is today. That's a cute story. I mean, she puts your time out and you're reading nursing books. 
I My favorite that. was the Red Cross home nursing book. It taught <laughs> the nurse how to everything, how to dig a uh, a hole, a, a latrine to uh, properly setting uh, a placement for food. <laughs> do you still have that book? I do, actually. It's on my bookshelf in <laughs> my know, office. I figured you would, knowing you that you would do something like that. Well, that's that's a lovely story because usually I ask all doctors, I ask a lot of people, professors, people who are on my radio show, and it's so interesting. Some people are a little uptight and they don't quite tell me, but uh, it is fun uh, to ask. And, and, of course, that, that, that was a good story, and I'm glad that uh, you shared that. So now as the CEO, what are your dreams and wishes? So because Broward Health Medical Center really is a comprehensive hospital that provides tertiary care to our community, we do very complex open-heart surgery, we do liver transplants, we are a high-risk maternity center, so we have a 63-bed neonatal intensive care unit that cares for the, the most ill babies uh, that you can have. It really is my uh, vision, uh, continuing vision, that we provide uh, quality care to our community, that we have sustainability, we have a track record. Downtown Fort Lauderdale is growing significantly. I'm sure you've seen the skyline. Oh, There's yeah. A lot of young professionals and young families moving into downtown Fort Lauderdale, as well as a lot of retirement, uh, newer retirement communities in large buildings moving into downtown Fort Lauderdale. So our goal is to serve our community and to be a partner, keep them out of the hospital, but when they unfortunately need hospital care, we want to be their hospital of choice. You know, it's interesting, whenever you call a doctor's office um, and they can't answer the phone or it's after hours, I always say, if this is an emergency, call 911. <laughs> So, so in my questioning, how do you get to choose the hospital when you call 911? Well, 911 uh, can take you to the hospital of your choice unless you're critically ill. If you're critically ill, they're obligated by state statute to take you to the closest hospital. So it really depends on the condition when you call 911. But interestingly enough, um, when I was talking earlier about population health, our care coordinators are working with um, our aligned physicians to actually change their message machines. And what's happening is we're educating our patients to call their care coordinator if they cannot get through to their doctor, and we will actually arrange the, the best care setting for them to receive the treatment that they need. And there'll always be someone answering that phone? Yes. That, so a care coordinator provides their cell phone. Uh, 24-7 for them to, to get a hold of their care coordinator. And we're doing that right now with our high-risk patient population. Mark, that's marvelous. Now, I'm so glad you mentioned that. I had not heard of that before. Yay! <laughs> so, now, well, that's really good because it's kind of off-putting when you say call 911. You say, well, I'm probably not that sick. And right. maybe you really are. But if you thought you could call a care coordinator, it sounds friendly. Absolutely, and they're registered nurses or licensed social workers, and they really can help our patients navigate the health care system. Many times they need an urgent care center and not an ER, or sometimes they can really get into the doctor the next day, and the nurse can help the patient choose over-the-counter uh, symptom relief medication to, to get them through the night. So if someone wants to take a tour through the... Uh, of course, through, let's start with you, with the Broward Health Medical Center, rather than some of the others. Um, of course, they can do, I guess, any of the others. But they want to see what you're talking about. What would they do? Would they just call your office? And you probably have lots of volunteers who sure. would we give, help. We give tours all the time. You oh, can you do? 954-355-5610. Again, that's 954 954- Three five 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 six one zero, and that's administration. And let them know that you would like a tour, and we'll be happy to to uh, provide you all the information you need about our hospital. It's a great hospital. They have now um, one thing I love when you walk in there. They have a piano that plays by itself. <laughs> I mean, kids love that. They can't believe it. They, they say there must be ghosts there, but that's uh, that's so nice to have there. Um, the other thing, though, is. When when you do go there, um, make sure that you visit the gift shop. I always push all the gift shops at all the Broward Health Hospitals because 
it's really it's run by volunteers and i want to talk about that in a minute volunteers and this is a way for them to get some more money to help with all their needs so talk about volunteers if someone's listening and they'd like to become a volunteer would they just call that number they can call the same number, 954-355-5610, and we'll put you in touch with Volunteer Services. Our auxiliary does a wonderful job raising money for the hospital, but they also serve in several volunteer capacities from patient transport, um, the gift shop, waiting room, rounding with uh, coffee or, or tea for patients, and, and oftentimes keep a lonely patient company. Um, it really is a good opportunity to socialize with other retirees, and it's also a good opportunity to give back to your community. Absolutely, and if something's happened in your life and you feel lonesome, just call. Uh, just call and, and act to, ask to be a volunteer, whether it's for the hospital or for a, another organization. I've always pushed being a volunteer, and uh, it, it just it's when you give, you know, it's really paying it forward. You get something back, and you're giving, and... And that's really great. And do you, um, do you have a family, Mark? I do have a family. Um, my, uh, I actually, what brought me to Florida was caring for my uh, grandmother, but I have uh, 16 nieces and nephews. And they keep me very, very busy. <laughs> Can you remember all their names? Uh, I would be, I would struggle to go through the names. <laughs> I would need, I, I, would, I, I couldn't do it on the fly. <laughs> That is amazing. That's a great family, and and so, but that's really what life is about. It sounds like you've been your grandmother. Your grandmothers were very important in your life. I get that feeling. Yeah, we, uh, you know, very similar to how people are living today. We had a multi generational household, and uh, it was very, um, you know, enriching for my life. Yeah, that's unimpo- that's what's so sad today that a lot of people are distant from their family members, and they just never get to know them. They never get to sit and um and and understand who they are or to read their books or to any of those things so um so if someone i I did notice when they come when you go into the broward health medical center you do have is a library or it's a quiet room it's something i can't remember now exactly what i've seen several um areas in the hospital where you can get away and uh, we have a chapel we have um, several areas where you can relax and have some serenity and de-stress from from what you're dealing with um, with a loved one in the hospital true yeah hospitals are hospitals are very different everyone everyone says i don't want to go to a hospital because if i do i'm never going to come back i'm going to die there well that's not true anymore this especially hospitals today especially the broward health district hospitals they really want to be um, part of the community it's not it's not quite a um, you know, community center in a sense. But I know when I go over to Imperial Point, I mean, they have the man van that comes out of there. They have all sorts of festivals. And you see, if you get to know your hospital ahead of time, when you do go there, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable. And that's what I think you all have tried to do. Haven't you, Mark? I, I do. I think, and as you point out, the, the vast majority of, of patients come into the hospital and they leave better off uh, than they came in. Uh, so it really has changed over the years. We do a lot of elective surgery, joint replacement. Um, we, we do a lot of deliveries. Uh, again, a very joyous uh, moment in most people's lives. So, yeah, the, the model really has changed to one of wellness and it's, it's our job to restore you. Well, restoration, that's maybe maybe one day, maybe one day the name hospital will change. I don't even know what that word comes from. I would have to look it up. That's a good question. <laughs> well, 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 of course, now. I'm sure it has Latin roots like all words. <laughs> true, but of course, medical centers are, are things that are being used, but you're actually called the medical center rather than, for instance, we have the Broward Health North and we have the one in Coral Springs and... Uh, you know, and we're, we have, it's just different names, but it's pretty much the whole health, the whole health district. And uh, it's really been a, a great thing. There's been so many famous people who have gone to your hospitals and raved about them. And, and I'm sure if you took all the testimonials, it would just fill books because people really appreciate the care that they get at a hospital. 
Absolutely, and and we call ourselves a medical center just because we have physician offices and uh, many other things on campus. But the nice thing about technology, I just Googled the origin of hospital. Oh, you're, you're, <laughs> so, you're so good. What is it? So it's a hospice, especially one run by the Knights of Hospitaller. So that's what it comes from, hospital, Knights of Hospitaller. <laughs> I'm, glad that you, I'm glad you brought something up. Someone can be in hospice, but they can be in the hospital in hospice, can't they? Yeah, we contract with um, hospice groups to where they, they will contract beds. So if you um, cannot be at home or your home environment isn't conducive to the, the hospice setting, you can still receive hospice care within a hospital. And then within Broward Health Medical Center, we have an eight-bed hospice unit. Oh, you do? Uh, And then at Broward Health North, we have a hospice unit as well, which is run by the Toss Hospital, uh, Mm. hospice. Yeah, that's that's very, very important uh, that people don't have to be transferred if they are very ill and that they would like to have that hospice care that then they can just have it there. So, um, so what do you think we're looking for in the future uh, with, with the, all the hospitals? You know, as a CEO, of, acting CEO of one, you're probably in touch with everyone. What, what really are your goals? Our goals are, as you know, South Florida is growing. Uh, we are becoming more and more populous, and we have uh, the diversity in South Florida. So to be here for the community, we have to provide culturally competent care, different cultures, different languages, also be age-appropriate. We have hospitals that are certified by NICHE, which is nurses caring for um, health system elders, so making our environment more friendly to to elders. And uh, it's also about uh, we have a role in our community for employment, right? So we have to make sure that we are financially viable, uh, provide a quality product at a low cost, and and also serve as a major employer uh, in, in the area. Well, Mark, you've done a great job. I am so glad that you were able to come on the radio today. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again. And yay for Broward Health Medical Center and Mark Sprada, acting CEO. Great. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Mark. Bye-bye.